How many of you heard what Doug had to say? If you have any uh, empty uh, seats in the middle, can you raise your hands, please? Thank you very much. Ushers, there are some empty seats here in the front row. If you could uh, assist, that'll be of help. Okay, thank you so much for coming. Welcome to uh, Hillview Bible Chapel's Christmas program. Um, If you were here last night, welcome back. And if you're a visitor, we want to extend a very special welcome to you. The theme for uh, our Christmas program this year is Unwrapping Christmas. The idea is to help us all understand and appreciate the real meaning of Christmas. If as you listen to the songs and carols and the narration and the message uh, that we will have later in the program... It is all to that effect of unwrapping what the Christmas program or Christmas is all about. So um, our choir has put together a program for us, and uh, it's, it's really phenomenal. It's really wonderful. How many of you he- were here last night? Do you think it was good? Okay. Yes, it was good. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> and our program comes with a money-back guarantee. It's really good. Yeah. So we have uh, a large group performance. We have small group. We have uh, uh, quartet. We have... Duet, we have solo, all kinds. It's, it comes with a variety here. So, and, all, and then on top of that, we have the kids who would come here. They are very cute, I'm telling you. You will really, really enjoy them. Uh, they were a hit last night. Do you guys think they were a hit last night? <laughs> yeah, they were. You know the reason? The reason was you guys lis- really listened to me and you did not wave back at them <laughs> when they were waving at you. So uh, keep up the good work, and they need to be focusing on their direct choir directors here, and uh, you will really enjoy uh, their performance as well. And you'll be wondering, you know, Christmas is all about singing. It's, it's all about carols. And uh, you would wonder, why is so much singing in the Christmas, during the Christmas time? You know, there's a verse in the Bible that says this, My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you and the soul that you have redeemed, Psalm 71. 23. So I'm not going to tell you the entire reason why singing is such a huge theme, huge thing during the Christmas season, but I want you to listen to the narration. I want you to listen to the words of the song, and then I will come up and wrap this uh, morning with a short message, and that would explain why singing is a big theme or a big thing during the Christmas time. In the meantime, just enjoy, and uh, let me uh, go ahead and pray and commit this time to the Lord. And then we'll go and get started. Our Father, we thank you so much for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the fact that he was born and uh, he was laid in a manger and uh, he died to take our sins away. We thank you that that, uh, you have opened the gate of heaven to all those who believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you that uh, we could sing joyful songs to you this morning and help us enjoy it. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to introduce our uh, narrator for this uh, morning, Bob Johansson. Thank you, David. And thank you for joining with us as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, there are so many different legends and traditions surrounding Christmas, from a reindeer's red nose to a kiss under mistletoe. And they can be fun to enjoy. But this morning, we have something else in mind we would like to share with you. Kids, come on in. What we would like to do for you this morning is unwrap the true meaning of Christmas. The reason we have a Christmas to celebrate it all. And what better way to begin, what better place to begin than at that moment in time when God became a man away in a manger.
away from where? From his home, his throne in heaven. Because of his great love and incredible desire for us, Jesus left heaven to enter our world to share his message with us. And this message is one of peace and joy that he offers to every one of us, along with a greater gift, one that contains peace, joy, love, and so much more, the gift of relationship. To have a relationship with God, that is what Christmas time is all about. is here to remind us of this great gift that God offers us. The gift of relationship is really the basis and reason for all other gifts. The desire to express oneself to another and receive their acceptance and affection in return. I mean, this is why God created us, to live with hearts open to love and be loved. Not that God needs our love. He just wants to share his love and blessings with us. So you can imagine the pain and grief that our God felt in the garden when he was rejected by the very ones he had created to love. So it was then that God began to unwrap his Christmas gift and reveal the plan of how he would restore their relationship with him. It was then that God promised the man and his wife that though they had turned against him, he would not stop until he had made it possible for them and us as their descendants to return to him and enjoy the wonders of his love once again. Now, he knew it would take thousands of years to properly unwrap this gift with its message of peace on earth and tidings of good cheer. 
but he also knew that at the right time, he himself would come to dwell with us to make his message known in person. And it would begin when he would entrust himself as a babe in the womb to another man and wife, not that far from Bethlehem. Isn't it great to receive a gift from someone who really knows you and cares about you? They're more apt to give you something you really want or need. And a good gift meets a need. And it doesn't break down after a week or so and then it's discarded. But to truly be beneficial, a gift needs to be understood to be appreciated. And that can take time. Time to see that there really is a need for it. But when that moment comes, we're not that far from having that need met. Such is the case with the, God, uh, the gift that God offers us. And he doesn't offer us just a good gift, 
he offers us the greatest gift, this gift of relationship. And it's, for the greatest gift meets the greatest need, and it doesn't break down after a week. It lasts forever. But to truly to be able to receive this gift, we must first unwrap the layers that entangle and strangle us and let them drop and fall away. And then open our heart and arms and come to him. God in a manger, our Savior and King who created us, knows us and loves us intimately. And he knows everything we ever done, thought, or felt, and all the reasons why. And he sees the pride and fear and sin we wrap ourselves in and how it separated us from him. So he calls us to be vulnerable, to trust him, and surrender it all to him. And our God has set the example of what it means to be vulnerable. For when he became a man, he unwrapped himself, as it were, and lay his glory by and received our abuse and scorn for it. But he never stopped being God. And he who is love never stopped loving us. In fact, love came down to be the hope we've waited for on the night when love was born. Star light shine, 
The night is still, shepherds watching from a hill. I close my eyes and see the night when love was born. A perfect child, gently waits, a mother bears to kiss God's face. I close my eyes and see the night when love was born. Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, love come down for you and me. Heaven's gift, the holy spark to light the down for you and me hope with him might be restored for he is the holy spark that lights the way inside our hearts he is the one who took upon himself the cost of our betrayals but when we cut ourselves off from the source of life in spirit we died as did our relationship with him so jesus who is life died on our behalf and rose again to become our Savior and Redeemer, to save us and restore our relationship with him. Jesus truly is the gift of heaven. There's a song in the air, there's a star in the sky, hear a mother's deep prayer, and a baby's loud cry, see the star rain its fire, while the beautiful sing, for a manger of Bethlehem cradles the King. Gift of heaven, our Savior, the Word in flesh has come. 
Precious Jesus, Redeemer, you've come to save the world. There's a choir of joy. There's a marvelous birth for the virgin sweet boy is the Lord of all the earth. See the star rain its fire while the beautiful sing for a manger of Bethlehem cradles the king. Gift of heaven Savior, the Word in flesh has come. Precious Jesus, Redeemer, you've come to save the world. This baby boy will be our only victory on the cross, on the cross. Sweet Jesus, you will be our only victory on the cross, on the cross. This baby boy will be our only victory on the cross on the cross sweet jesus you will be our only victory on the cross on the cross See the star rain its fire while the beautiful sing for a manger of Bethlehem cradles the King. Gift of heaven, our Savior, the Word in flesh has come. Precious Jesus, Redeemer, you've come to save the world. Gift of heaven, our Savior, the Word in flesh has come. Precious Jesus, Redeemer, you've come to save the world. You've come to save the world. You've come to save the world. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus gained the victory for us. He's done everything necessary to restore our relationship with him. When we surrender all to him and confess our sin and need for him, he forgives us and restores our relationship with him. How should we then respond? With thankfulness as we think on all the Lord Jesus has done and given because of the cross. a lot about gifts, as 
especially if you're a kid. But some gifts you just can't put in a box. God's greatest gift to us is love. This shouldn't be surprising to us because the Bible tells us that God is love. And because he loves us so much, he sent his son to be born, placed in a manger, like this one, to grow up and to one day die so that we could live with him forever. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God doesn't owe us anything, yet he still gives us wonderful things that we can never earn and don't deserve, like love and a special relationship with him. This is called grace. Ephesians 2, 8. By grace you have been saved through faith, but not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. I really like getting gifts. So it's hard for me to understand when someone doesn't want one. But if you think about it, it happens all the time because not everyone is willing to accept God's free gift of salvation. But if you do, he gives you peace in knowing that you belong to him and that he'll take care of you. Romans 5, 1. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes I do things I'm not supposed to do. Except around Christmas time when I'm pretty glad behaving myself. <laughs> but when we come to God and confess our sins, he will forgive us. He can do this because Jesus paid the price for our sins on the cross. Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Apart from Jesus Christ, there is no hope in having a relationship with our Creator. But, because of Jesus' sacrifice for us, we can have a relationship with Him that will be filled with great joy. Luke 2.10 And the angels said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy which shall be for all the people.
That was great. We definitely want the way we feel about our Lord Jesus to be seen on the outside and all we say and do. But our relationship with our Savior should also be felt at a deeper level as we spend time with him, exploring and enjoying his many attributes, especially his wonderful, wonderful, wonderful love. Love, we'll want to give this gift of joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, 
Repeat the sound in joy. Repeat the sound in joy. Repeat, repeat the sound in joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love This is what Christmas is all about, celebrating the wonders of his love from the manger to the cross. And this is what relationship is about, recognizing all that our great God and Savior has done for us and then giving to him the praise and worship he is so worthy to receive.
What a great last song with that crescendo. And I want to uh, hear one more round of applause for our choir director and our narrator here. They have put in a lot of work. <clears throat> you know, I've been uh, watching them practice uh, whenever I could. And I would sit there back in the last row and I would, I practically memorized all the songs here. You know, when I listened to these songs, you know, it brought back a lot of good memories in my own life growing up uh, during Christmas time. You know, we would go to my grandparents' house for Christmas. You know, they went to an Anglican church. And for whatever reason, they had the Christmas, uh, uh, on, the, on the Christmas day, they would go to church at like 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, my grandfather with his uh, uh, deep voice would come and wake, wake us all up and would drag us to the, uh, to the church at 4 o'clock in the morning. I didn't ask, quite ask him why 4 o'clock in the morning. But, um, but we would have a fun time coming back, having a good breakfast and, and good lunch and so on. You know, Christmas is all about memories, isn't it? I'm sure you have a lot of memories going up, uh, cold winter mornings and a lot of good food and gifts and exchanging gifts and so on. You know, some of my more recent memories go back to like uh, 19, 20 years ago when I first came to the United States. I came to Michigan. I vividly remember my very first Christmas. And thankfully, it was a white Christmas. And, uh, you know, when I was growing up, I have heard a lot of these carols. But when I came to the United States, I found out that Christmas is a big deal. And I've heard a lot of good carols back in India, but then these were not sung in the stores or in the malls and so on. But here, starting in December, everything is so Christmassy. And when I started listening to these songs, some of these songs were like, does this have any connection with the actual meaning of Christmas? And there were songs like, on the 12th day of Christmas, my true love came to me, 12 drummers drumming, 11 pipers piping, 10 lords a leaping, 9 ladies dancing, 8 maids a milking, 7 swans a swimming, and so on. Deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 Walking in the winter wonderland. I love these songs. But I don't know if they had any relationship in their meaning to Christmas. But then there was this one song that I did not quite hear back in India, and I felt in love with this song, with its deep meaning and beautiful music, and that's the song, The First Noel. I didn't quite understand the meaning of Noel. I wasn't curious enough to go find it out. I was quite happy with the tune. And then I had a friend whose brother's name was Noel. And I asked him, are you sure it's Noel and not Joel, which would be said Joel? I said, no, it's Noel. And then years later, I found out the actual meaning of the word Noel. Now in French, Joe Noel means Merry Christmas. That's the best French you can get out of me. Merci beaucoup. The word Noel comes from the word novellas, which means news or announcement. And there is another side of the root meaning for the word Noel, which comes from the Latin side. Noel is, comes from natalis, and natalis is the word from which we get the word nativity. When we talk about a nativity scene, it comes from natalis, which is, the meaning is birth. So putting these together, Noel is an announcement of a birth. A birth announcement. You know, among the various themes that we can talk about when it comes to Christmas, I want to bring your attention, as I'm going to close this meeting today, to the announcement of the birth of Jesus. This is really spectacular. I wish I was there to witness this announcement of the birth of Jesus Christ. And this is recorded for us in the Bible in Luke's Gospel, chapter uh, 2. And verse 6 says this, When they, which is Joseph and Mary, were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. That was the scene right there. 
Now the scene shifts. The focus is shifting a little bit. Another area, another place in the same region. There were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. What was the first thing that is recorded here that Mary did after she gave birth to Jesus? She wrapped him in cloths. And then the sign that the angel gave to these shepherds were, was, you will find this baby wrapped in cloths. So the question is, what is, what is the big deal about cloths? Wrapping a baby in swaddling cloths. I mean, isn't it, isn't it a normal practice? I was there when my wife gave birth to my two boys. And I still remember this nurse with this blue, clean towel. Clean, I thought it was. I hope so. <laughs> and the very first thing that the doctor did was to take the baby out and put, it in, put, put, put them in the arms of this nurse with this white towel. They wrapped them. That's normal. Is that a sign? That there will be a baby who will be wrapped in cloths? I'm sure there will be plenty of babies around in Bethlehem that day, which probably may not be newborn, newborn, but babies who probably were, were wrapped in cloths. It is a big deal. And the reason is, it's not just it was wrapped in swaddling cloths. The reason are the words that follow these words. And these words are, the baby will be wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Mary would wrap the baby with cloths and put them in a manger. The sign that was given to the shepherds were, you will find this baby... Wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. That's enough. Because there will be only one baby that will be lying in a manger. Has there ever been a baby in the history of mankind who was laid in a manger? It's a feeding trough. Would you put your baby in a trough, feeding trough, in a manger? The sign that the angels gave to Mary was, this baby is not a baby that was kind of thrown out without any care. This baby was cared for. The parents brought with them the swaddling clothes. They were very careful, concerned, responsible parents. But there was no room for them in the end. What would they do? They put them in the manger where they could find was the best place at that time. The first Noel. The first announcement was about this baby who was wrapped in cloths and was laid in a manger. And I also want to tell you that the first Noel was not just about this baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and laid in a manger, but the first Noel was also about this baby who would grow up to be a man, whose body will be wrapped in clothes of linen one day. This baby came out of the swaddling clothes. It grew up. He was obedient to his father and mother. This baby was prophesied to be born into this world. If there was one person who was prophesied many, many, many centuries before he or she would be born, that is this baby, this baby Jesus Christ. For many, many centuries, to the very specifics of the town and the day and the date and the parents, the prophecy was made. A virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. The meaning of Emmanuel is God with us. And this baby would grow up. 
because he was God in flesh. This baby was born to be a savior. Is that what the angel said? For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a savior. A savior has been born. Because the world is full of sin. Man is conceived in sin. Man is a sinner by his birth, by his actions, by his decisions, and so on. A sinful man cannot have any relationship with God. And because of sin, man cannot be guaranteed heaven, and there has to be a Savior. And this is the Savior. This is the Savior, Jesus Christ, who was born. And he would go up on the cross. They would put him up on the cross. The Jews would deliver him to the Romans, and the Romans would crucify him on the cross. And there, the Savior of the world will take all the sin of the world on himself. He was sinless, but he would take the sin of the world on himself. Your sin and my sin, he would take on himself. And he died on that cross because there is no forgiveness is it this one? There is no forgiveness of sin without shedding of blood, the Bible says. The shedding of sinless blood, and the sinless blood was the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. They brought the body down. And there was a good man by name Joseph of Arimathea. And this guy brought the body of Jesus, wrapped it very tightly with his linen grave clothes, put spices on it, put it in the tomb. But you see, a savior cannot be a dead savior. A dead savior is good for nothing. But this savior, because he's God in flesh, who has power over death, power over sin, he rose up on the third day, which is a historical fact. The empty tomb today in the land of Israel is a fact is the proof to that fact that Jesus rose from the dead. He was unwrapped from his linen grave clothes. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to present to you today not a dead Savior who is still wrapped in the grave clothes. Not a baby Jesus who was wrapped in his swaddling clothes. We want to present to you a Savior who is risen. A Savior who is out of all those clothes and who is willing to accept those who come to him in repentance and confession. That's the meaning of Christmas. Remember I asked you a question earlier, why do these people sing like this? Why is singing a big part of Christmas? It is because of this. It's because Jesus gives eternal life. Jesus gives salvation. Jesus is the only one who can give us hope and life after death. Because he is the one who died for you and me. No other faith system can guarantee that. The Bible says, in him is salvation. In him is redemption. And you can know for sure that you can have salvation in Christ Jesus. And I trust this Christmas will be very special for you. Because you probably, if you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you would have unwrapped the true meaning of Christmas. That would be a Merry Christmas for you. And we want to invite you to do that today. I'm going to pray, and then uh, we can have a time of fellowship here in the hall. Thank you so much for, for coming. Father, we thank you so much for the Lord Jesus Christ, and thank you for his salvation. Thank you for his death. Thank you for his uh, work that you do in our lives. We thank you for the program today, we uh, want to ask that you would continue to bless those who have come. We pray that uh, the gospel of salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ would continue to penetrate their hearts. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.